Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. This is Rami Salame, and in today's video, I'm gonna be going over how you can get started in Amazon FBA in 2021. Now, this video took a lot of planning on my end to prepare it and to basically condense it to one standalone YouTube video. So it would mean the world to me if you do like this video and subscribe to the channel. And beyond that, if you stay until the end, I'm also gonna be going over the general cost that I think it's gonna take you from starting with Amazon FBA to all the way launching your product live on amazon.com. Now with that being said, let's just jump right into the video. So to begin, I wanna first go over what Amazon FBA is in the first place. So FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. That's basically where you reach out to manufacturers, you find a product you wanna make, and you private label it, so you put your brand on there. You then send that product into an Amazon warehouse and Amazon will fulfill all of your orders. So they'll pick, pack, and ship out all of your orders to customers who purchase your product on amazon.com. And beyond that, they'll even provide all of the customer service. Now, why this is so huge is that the scalability here is insane. There isn't a cap to it. And I've been selling on Amazon via FBA since middle of 2017. And it's been the foundation of everything I've been able to do for myself to date which is why I really wanted to share my knowledge in this video and go over what I can and hopefully get you started on an extra stream of income for yourself. Now, with that being said, let's actually jump into the eight steps I planned out for this video. So step number one, I want you to all understand that starting an Amazon FBA business is a business. So you should protect yourself and do things the right way from the get-go. So opening up an LLC, a limited liability company in your state, in my opinion, is very important. And beyond that, once you open up that LLC, you can go to the IRS, get your EIN, which is your social security for your LLC for the most part. And you can utilize your EIN and your limited liability company that you made to open up a business bank account. Now, why I put that as step one is because step two is you opening up an Amazon Seller Central account, which is your business account to basically, you know, list products on Amazon. If you want to actually open up an Amazon Seller account under your LLC, you're going to need the LLC created, your EIN and a business bank account. If you do those three things, you will be able to set up an Amazon Seller Central account. And I cannot stress this enough, it is super important to do it this way, just simply because you wanna do things the right way from the get-go, because our plan is to be truly successful on Amazon. So if you do it the right way from the start, you will save yourself a lot of anxiety for the future. So step three is product research. This is basically finding products that you can sell well and profitably on amazon.com. Now I can't stress this enough to go into all the exact criterias and go into detail for this section would take hours. So I'm gonna give you the broad overview. You wanna find products that aren't too competitive, so it's a niche that isn't loaded with reviews. You wanna find a product that low reviewed sellers are doing very well in revenue, so it sells very well even though it has low reviews because that's basically gonna be how you're gonna start an Amazon. And then also you wanna make sure that it's profitable. So if it sells well, but you're not making any profit on it, obviously you don't want to get into it. So that's the overall idea. You don't want it to be too competitive. You want the revenue to be great and you want it to be profitable. If you can find those three, you're on the right track. But beyond that, I want to give you some tools for you to utilize to make sure you can kind of get an idea of how those work. So you can use different Chrome extensions and I'm going to list three down below. I have no affiliate links down below. Just do some research on all three and figure out which one you actually want to go with. That is Zonbase. Helium 10 and Jungle Scout, all three are great extensions you can be using on Amazon. The one that I use the most as of late is Zonbase just because it gives you so many different access to tools. So I thoroughly enjoy that one the most. But again, I'll list all three down below to help you with product research, to help you find products that again, hit those three categories. But I do also wanna share a few free tools that is vital for you to make sure that your product doesn't fall into these for you to still sell successfully on Amazon. So the first thing is actually Google Trends. So you can search keywords into Google Trends and it will give you accurate data of how often that keyword is searched on google.com. So why this is important is that this is an easy way for you to figure out if the product that you're going into is seasonal or not. So for example, I'll show a screenshot of this keyword Christmas tree. So if you search Christmas tree during quarter four of amazon.com, the revenue, the reviews, everything's gonna look fantastic. However, Christmas tree, obviously to us, we know that this is a highly seasonal item and only sells during Q4. But if you search it into Google Trends, as you see here, it has a clear representation of how all the search volume is just during Q4 and beyond that, mainly in December. Now, obviously Christmas tree is a uh, obvious example of this, but there are plenty of products that you would be kind of slipped up to realize is seasonal. 
So utilizing Google Trends is very powerful, but also I want to mention two more things that is vital for you to make sure before you jumping into a product. And that is doing a USPTO trademark search. So you want to make sure that the product you're getting into is not trademarked in any way. So obviously there's going to be brands that are trademarked, but make sure the product itself, like the keyword that you're going to be going into is not trademarked. That's very important. And then beyond that, you should do a Google patent search. The only way you would truly know if a product doesn't have a patent is if you hire a patent attorney and go through the entire process. But I still feel comfortable if I do a trademark search and a Google patent search for the product slash keyword I want to go into. As long as nothing funky comes up, I'm going to feel very comfortable going into that product. And then the last free tool I really want to bring up to you is the Amazon FBA fee calculator. I'm going to be again leaving links for all these down below. That Amazon FBA fee calculator, you can put in all the information for a similar product you want to release and you can figure out the profitability of that. So it is vital to use all of this information for your product research to make sure that you are picking the right product. Now, step four is finding the right manufacturer for your product and placing your first order. Now, I cannot stress this enough. This can be a super anxiety filled and stressful part of the whole Amazon journey. But if you take it one step at a time, you can definitely do this. And basically you're going to be utilizing two different websites to find manufacturers for your product. The number one website is going to be Alibaba.com. I'm sure you've heard of it. This is where basically all the manufacturers overseas are on and you can find it in one section. Now, majority of my orders and majority of my products I make is via through Alibaba and it's made in China. However, I do have one product that I found on Thomasnet which is suppliers and manufacturers in the United States that I was able to have manufactured and supplied at a profitable price. It's kind of rare for sure to get products that can be made in the United States successfully. But if you can make that happen, you should absolutely go down that route because it does make a lot of things easier. Plus it's cool to have it made in the United States too if, if that's where you reside. Now, if you are gonna be going down the more common route, which is getting your product made in Alibaba.com, I wanna go over a couple of things to make sure that you're selecting the right manufacturer to protect yourself. The number one thing when you're searching a product, let's take an example that we wanna make a garlic press. I'm gonna kinda of overlay this as I'm talking so it'll make a lot of sense. So you can search garlic press into Alibaba.com. Now there are three things I wanna look for in the manufacturer listing, which number one, I wanna make sure they're verified with Alibaba.com and here is a symbol for it, but I also wanna make sure that they accept trade assurance. And trade assurance is basically Alibaba's payment platform on alibaba.com. Now trade assurance is going to protect you heavily because if you know something goes wrong with your order or if the manufacturer does something wrong or just never makes your order, you can file a claim with trade assurance and get your money back. So definitely making sure that your manufacturer is verified on alibaba.com and it accepts trade assurance is really huge. Beyond that, I want to make sure it has multiple years on alibaba.com. So if it has those three, the likelihood of them taking the risk of kind of scamming you or like ruining the relationship or you know releasing a bad product to you is kind of slim to none because Alibaba is the powerhouse of manufacturing. They are the Amazon of manufacturers. So there's no way that you know a manufacturer is just gonna ruin all their credibility on Alibaba.com for no reason. It just it wouldn't make sense for one order. They would lose so much money. So again, if you make sure that the manufacturer is verified, you make sure it accepts trade assurance. And then it has some years on Alibaba.com, you're on a good route um, and it should be a pretty good manufacturer. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach out to multiple manufacturers from there that kind of fit that category and you're gonna get samples from them. Now, you're gonna end up picking the manufacturer that gives you the best communication, gives you the best pricing and the best quality sample. It's literally as easy as that. So once you get all that information and you figure out the manufacturer that offers you the best quality, that's the one you're gonna go with and you're gonna place your first order. A common question I get is, how many units should I order for my first order? My easy answer to that is you wanna order about 90 days worth of inventory. You can use the Chrome extensions I mentioned before in step three to figure out how many units you need to order for 90 days worth. So that's how many I would order for my first you know, production order. So let's say hypothetically that it takes 1,000 units to last you 90 days. That's how many units you would order with your manufacturer and how I would begin the process. And I stress you all to do this, especially for your first order. You're going to basically pay a 30% deposit of the total invoice. And that's going to give the manufacturer enough confidence to start the entire production order. Now, once they complete the order, they're going to reach out to you and say, Hey, Rami, your order's ready. You can release the 70% payment. What I'm actually going to do instead, I'm going to send an inspection company, a third party inspection company in China. I use SellerKai. I'll use them down. I'll, I'll link them down below if you wanted to as well. And basically for like 150 bucks, I can have a third party person 
go into my warehouse in China, hop on a live stream with me, and I can expect the entire production order, as well as I can give them you know, tests I want them to do on my product. Now, once that product order actually passes inspection, I will then release the 70% payment and have my um, manufacturer actually send the product to the nearest Chinese port, where I will then have my freight forwarder pick up the product and send it in to the Amazon warehouse, which is what brings us to step five, which is freight forwarding. So basically what freight forwarding is, this is another uh, very tricky part of the whole Amazon process, but when you get a good freight forwarder, it makes everything super, super, super easy. I'm gonna leave um, a link down to three different freight forwarders you can choose from. Basically, I go between Freydos as well as Sellerkai and Tonchant. Those are three great freight forwarders you can go with. Freydos is actually a website for a bunch of different freight forwarders, and I get quotes from all of them, and I go with the freight forwarder that gives me the best price. Now, to make it simple, what a freight forwarder does is that they handle all the logistics, they handle the shipping of your product from the pickup of the Chinese port all the way to the Amazon warehouse. Again, I think it is very vital for you to reach out to multiple freight forwarders and get quotes from each of them, figure out which ones that you communicate with the best, and I would go with that freight forwarder. Now, one like side note, one asterisk I really wanna bring up that I see a lot of people forgetting about, especially when you're making products in China. When it reaches the US port, understand that your product does have customs duties and taxes that you have to pay. So it is very vital for you to reach out to your manufacturer and get your HS code which is like the product identifier that the US Customs use to figure out your duties and tax rate. So that HS code, you're gonna give it to your freight forwarder and you can say, hey, can you please figure out how much my duties and taxes are gonna be in advance so I can prepare for it? Some products have like little to no duties and taxes while other products have heavy duties and taxes. So it is very vital for you to understand this just so you don't have a huge surprise once your product reaches the United States and you're like hit with some huge duties and tax bill. But while this is all going on, you're also gonna be doing a couple of things. So one of those things is actually creating the listing on amazon.com. So while your product's being made and you know your product's being sent over to Amazon, like being shipped in, you're gonna be creating a great listing. Now the main things I wanna stress on a listing is you want a great title, you want great bullet points, and you want great photos. If you have those three and it's not a hyper competitive product, you should do very well. Now how to get really standout great products is that you're gonna have a sample made completed. So you're gonna, once you pick your manufacturer and you're having the order made, have your manufacturer make another unit that you're then gonna airship to a product photographer. You can find tons of product photographers everywhere. You can use Fiverr, Upwork, you can use Facebook to just search, you can use different Facebook groups, you can even use LinkedIn, or you can just type into Google Amazon FBA product photographer. Find one with great reviews and move forward with them. But one thing I do wanna stress heavily is that you don't want to cheap out on your product photography. My initial product photography will be my like heaviest expenditure almost. Um, it won't cost, cost as much as like the product itself, but I will spend a lot of money on great photos. There's been numerous times where I've spent a thousand plus dollars just on product photography for one product because I wanted really cool lifestyle photos. I wanted cool infographics. So it is really important and very, very vital for you to have a successful listing to have amazing photos. Think about any time you're gonna be buying a product on amazon.com. One of the first things you look for is the photos. So I can't stress that enough. It is super important for you to do so. And then once you have the listing all made, what you're also gonna be doing is actually creating a shipping plan. So once the listing is made, you can actually create a shipping plan, which is like the next thing you have to do while your product's being made, because you need to give labels from the shipping plan to your manufacturer. You're gonna get the FN SKU, which long story short is like your UPC code. Um, that you're gonna give to your manufacturer to print on your product. So you're gonna have that UPC code there. You're also gonna get box labels and pallet labels from the shipping plan. That's the main things you have to be doing while your product's being made, slash getting shipped over. But getting all the labels sent over, you obviously need to do that before you know the products leave because your manufacturer, again, puts on the FN SKU, which is your UPC code. And a little tidbit, really make sure that by your FN SKU, somewhere on your product it says made in China. That is super important because if it doesn't say made in China and it's actually made in China, it will not pass the US customs. And then you're gonna give them box labels and pallet labels and your manufacturer will absolutely know how to do all this. And why all these labels are important is because once your product reaches Amazon, the warehouse, the warehouse associates actually scan these labels 
And that's how your product is officially live on Amazon. So the last thing I wanted to go over is once your product is live, how do you launch it? How do you rank it? I'm gonna go over two fairly simple processes you can do. Number one is a search find buy method is where you actually do a product giveaway and you have people search your product, find it, and then buy it on amazon.com, which will then rank your product higher on Amazon and get it closer to page one, depending on how many you have to give away. Or you can launch a very heavy pay-per-click advertising budget because Amazon has their own form of advertising called PPC, which is pay-per-click advertising. And you can launch your product by spending a lot of money in advertising, but if people are actually clicking on your listing and buying it because you have a great listing, you will then get organic ranking for it. And that's mainly how I wanted to go over and end this video. I wanted you to go from not having anything Amazon FBA related to starting the product and then actually getting it live on Amazon and launching it. Again, I can't stress this enough. I know that this was super broad, but please, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Then I'll know to make standalone videos regarding that and make sure I go a lot more in depth. I really appreciate you all taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was informative. What I'm gonna do now for the last part of this video, I'm gonna leave a little list right over here to what I consider would be the most, you know, it's gonna be still a rough idea. It's definitely gonna be a guesstimate, but this is gonna be a guesstimate of how much each step's gonna cost you and what I think you would need as an overall cost and overall budget to truly get started on Amazon FBA successfully. But with that all being said, thank you again so much for watching this video and I'll catch you next week.